Good evening and welcome to tonight's service from St Peter's in Harton and St Mark and St Cuthbert's at Cleeton Park. Let us join together in this service, hoping we will all meet again soon. God has chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be the heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him. Grace and peace to you from God. May you fill us with truth and joy. We come together as the family of God to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive his holy word and to bring before him the needs of the world. Let us pray. Lord, direct our thoughts. Teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in the spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for those things we have thought, said and done which separate us from you and from one another. You love us, but we find it hard to love others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help, but we ignore the cries of others. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You forgive us, but we bear grudges against each other. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in this image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Come, let us sing to the Lord. Rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Raise the rafters with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The Lord is our God and we are his. The people of his pasture and the sheep of his flock. The Collect. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we loving you in all things and above all things. May obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, A plumb line. Then the Lord said, See, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to the king Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very centre of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile, away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there, and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman, and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following his flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promise of Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption, 
as God's own people to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. say that I am, said Jesus, and who do you say that I am? Alleluia. The Gospel, Mark chapter 6, verse 14 to 29. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. King Herod heard of the demons cast out and the many who were anointed and cured, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, It is Elijah, and others said, It is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, He was greatly perplexed, 
and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for you? She replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the baptizer on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Now I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Spirit. Amen. During this period of lockdown, we've all perhaps watched a bit too much television. Particularly, we've watched a lot of repeats of various series which have been on television over years ago. Well, I'm guilty as anyone. The other week I was watching an episode of The Two Ronnies. The one in which the sketch was about Ronnie Corbett polishing an old bottle. And yes, lo and behold, out pops the genie, alias Ronnie Barker. And the genie grants four wishes instead of the usual three. Why? I don't know with three, but much hilarity ensued. Perhaps it's got something to do with the Four Candles story, but that is another story. Children, and many of us adults, love a story that includes the granting of three wishes. We like to hear of what others would select in their circumstances, and it makes us think about what we would choose. Very often in the story, those who have the wishes find that they wasted them or are tricked into making a wrong choice. The fact that there aren't enough wishes can be part of the frustration. Who we are will shape the choices we make in life anyway, wishes or no wishes. In the story of Pinocchio, you may remember, it's not the wishes that win the day, but what really matters for the key characters in the story. It is a very moral story about people and values and relationships. In our reading from Mark, there are at least four people who have a wish or strong desire. John the Baptizer had made it clear that people needed to change their ways and seek after the will of God. It made no difference to him who he challenged. Clearly from his writings, John the Baptist held no punches as he went about preaching a message of repentance and the imminence of the kingdom. He had heard like the rest of Herod's marriage to Herodias, and wished or wanted that the king would change his sinful ways. Herod, for his part, had wished that John would shut up, and because he hadn't, he put him in prison. The daughter of Herodias, who in this reading is also called Herodias, but according to the historian Josephus, 
is named as Salome. She greatly pleased her stepfather Herod. Because she pleased Herod, she found herself being granted the big wish question. Whatever she wanted, it would be granted. But she's not sure what to request. So she goes to her mother, who gets her wish and sees that John is put to death. It would seem they were all losers. John is killed. Herod is deeply grieved. Salome loses the chance for half of the kingdom. And we know from history that Herodias loses her position and influence within a few years. And yet John, who pays the highest price that day, didn't need to wish because he had understood the will of God and did his best to live a life that reflected that. It isn't easy to speak out in God's name and challenge people. Jesus said that among those born of women, no one is greater than John. High praise indeed from Jesus the Messiah. He understood the struggle for good over evil and the need for the life, the light to pierce the darkness. If all we can do is wish, then we are no better than the rest of the world. By God's grace and Jesus' pattern for living, we can live in the real world and make a difference. The Christian life is a life to be lived, not a dream to be admired. To know what, we must, what must be done is not easy, and to do it is even more difficult. However, God understands our fragility and our confusion, and perhaps even our lack of faith. Remember, even John had to send his followers to Jesus, just to make sure he had not got wrong the things that he was trying to do. The key players in today's gospel had real choices to make, and yet apart from John, none of them had allowed their lives to be guided by God. The result is truly appalling. If only Herod had understood what John had been trying to do for him and the rest of their community. If only Salome had been mature enough to make up her own mind. And if only Herodias had understand what really mattered in life. Of course, it is easy to judge the folly of others and not see our own ignorance. All too often, we can fall into the trap of thinking that we would know what to do and what to ask for. We would wish for the right things and in the right order. Whatever you wish, as Jesus faced the challenge on the Mount of Olives and prayed, not my will, but yours will be done. He understood the priority of living a life in accordance with the Father. It is no different for us, the friends and followers of Jesus. We must work hard at trying to live a life that reflects the values and lifestyle that God would want from all his children. Sometimes this will mean that those around us will not like what we say or the way we behave. People would rather keep God out of things, yet if we let them do that, we do them and ourselves a great disfavour. The salvation of the world is at stake. 
And if we lose sight of that, then wishing our lives away is all that will be left. And that is no life at all. Amen. God calls us to peace. In God's justice is our peace. Christ calls us to be God's people. In Christ is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve. To give and not to count the costs. To fight and not to heed the wounds. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labour and not to ask for reward. Say that knowing that I do your will. Amen. Those who speak out God's will are bound to be vulnerable to rejection and abuse. In humility and love, let us draw near our God and pray to him now. Lord God, we pray that our lives may be upright and holy, that our church communities may shine with goodness and love, humility and truth. We pray for all leaning lives to be straightened up through your merciful forgiveness. Holy God, scatter all darkness and bathe our world in your light. Lord God, we pray that many may be empowered to recognise evil and fight against it, to discern your warnings and speak them out, to notice the sparks of love and goodness and celebrate them. Holy God, scatter all darkness and bathe our world in your light. Lord God, we pray that our households and neighbourhoods, our places of work and leisure, may be arenas of praise and thankfulness, not only in comfort zones, but particularly through the disturbed and difficult times. Holy God, scatter all darkness and bathe our world in your light. Lord God, we pray for those in prison, for those leading cruel and violent lives, for all victims of oppression or abuse, for all who suffer mental anguish or physical pain. Holy God, scatter all darkness and bathe our world in your light. Lord God, we pray for those who have died, that they 
and we in our turn may be given merciful judgment through Jesus our Saviour and brought into the unquenchable light of heaven. At this time we remember Michael Hansen, John Moore and Helen Elizabeth Foster. Holy God, scatter all darkness and bathe our world in your light. Lord God, we pray for more thankful hearts to bless you, because the gifts we receive from you are so much more than we deserve. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And together we join in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love which never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others. May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light. Amen. Though many, we are one body in Christ. We belong to one another. By God's grace, we have different gifts. We will use them in faith. Rejoice in hope. Stand firm in trouble. Be constant in prayer. Filled with his spirit, we will serve the Lord. Eternal giver of love and life, your son Jesus Christ has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news that we proclaim. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Father's throne above So free
listening. 